Hey, it's Dry Bear. We're continuing our series of covering every specialization in Dragonflight. And today we're going to be talking about the Protection Paladin, the tank in a raid setting. I'll give you build import strings that you can import directly into your game, have your build ready to go. We'll talk about the basic rotation, the function, the cooldowns, and how to play it and what to look out for. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hi. All right, let's talk about Protection Paladin in Raid. Uh, they started out the season being one of the weaker tanks and they are slowly becoming one of the better tanks. They are super fun to play. It's actually one of my favorite tanks to play in Raid because they can off heal in certain situations, which gives them the opportunity to spot heal when big damage is going out, like on Dathia or Razageth, uh, which is super nice. And they have some really uh, interesting and fun tools in their toolkit that no other tank has, which is cool. If you're looking for the Mythic Plus version of this guide, I have that link down below in the description, and it is on my channel if you're looking for that kind of content. But this will be tailored towards Protection Paladin in the raid setting. And we'll start by giving a brief overview of the toolkit that Protection Paladin has. And then once we have a good basis understanding of that, we'll go into talent builds and uh, more nuanced details like rotation and cooldown usage. Starting with the basics, Protection Paladin has a unique resource, Holy Power. When you use abilities that generate Holy Power, you can see here in the middle of the screen on my tracker for Weekora, it actually adds Holy Power every time I use Blessed Hammer. Uh, and every time I throw Judgment, you'll build up Holy Power. The big thing you want to know about Holy Power, uh, especially in Dragonflight, is we have this new Dusk and Dawn buff. You get the Dawn buff when you hit five Holy Power, and you get the Dusk buff when you go from having some Holy Power down to zero. It doesn't just refresh itself when you're sitting at zero, uh, but when you have this going up, you'll get that. So you can see when we hit five, we get the Dawn buff. Dawn gives you increased damage and healing. Dusk gives you damage taken reduction. So it's damage reduction, which is super nice and gives you an option there uh, just for kind of scaling it up. So you wanna be refreshing that often, uh, using your abilities to stack up that, and then get, you know go to five, then go to zero, keep those buffs stacked up. We have a ground target AOE, Consecration. This by itself is pretty much your only major consistent AOE ability. You still have Avenger Shield and Divine Toll, but those have more uses than just having AOE. You also have some cool uh, modifications for Consecration that when you're standing in your Consecration, you get bonus effects, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get into talent builds. You have your Captain America shield, which is one of the coolest abilities that Protection Paladin gets. You throw a shield and it deals damage. It'll bounce between targets and do AoE. Uh, so if you have a big AoE here, uh, especially if you have it talented, you can do a whole bunch of AoE damage. It also silences and interrupts, which is super cool. Uh, and you'll get awesome ways to not only use your interrupt ability, which every tank has, you can use your little interrupt there to stop spell casting. You can also throw your shield to interrupt in silence, which is super nice as well. Next, you have your default judgment. And this is just throwing a hammer at a target. This has a lot of really cool effects in Dragonflight that you want to benefit from. Namely, your Zealot's Paragon and uh, your Sanctified Wrath will get benefits from using your judgment. And depending on your spec over here, you may have opportunities to use multiple judgments. But you want to keep this on cooldown um, just because you can get uh, you have like there's a lot that goes into judgment. But this is one one of your ways to build your holy power, which is really nice uh, and keeps you tanky. Uh, so you can kind of mix between using this and blessed hammer to to build up your holy power. And then once you have it built up, you'll be spending it. You have two options for spending your holy power. The first is going to be the one you spend it on most of the time, especially if you're in a good group or you're you're well geared. You'll most often be spending it on shield of the righteous. This is an ability that comes base kit for Paladins. So all Paladins have this. It costs three Holy Power. You do an AoE in front of you. It does Holy Damage, and then it increases your armor by a significant amount for 4.5 seconds. And then you have other buffs like your readout here, which can give you more strength and stamina, uh, which almost everybody runs. This is pretty much in every build. Uh, it's nice to have 6% strength, 6% st stamina. But that's part of being tanky. Every tank has... You know, whether it's iron fur or uh, you know uh, pain you know pain uh, whatever the the warrior one is you always have an option to spend resource to have a momentary increase in tankiness and that for protection paladin is your shield of the righteous so when I pop shield of the righteous you can see I'm tracking it here on my weak aura while this is up I have a lot more armor than I normally do so you want to make sure that you maximize the uptime of having shield of the righteous so that you're able to make yourself tanky as, as you can be, so you can tank hits and be good to go. The other option that you have for spending Holy Power is Word of Glory. 
Uh, this is going to be a single target instant cast heal. Uh, and then you have ways to modify it as well. You can make it uh, stronger um, based on whether the target has low HP. Uh, you can make it stronger based on uh, if you, know, you are casting it on yourself, which is really nice. Um, it's an instant cast heal. So you will be using this to keep yourself going, right? So as you take damage and get lower and lower, uh, you will be using this to kind of pop up and get your health back up. However, in a group setting or in a raid setting, uh, it's it's usually, or specifically in a raid setting, it's usually better for you as a prop paladin to stay as tanky as possible and let the healers heal you. Uh, you're not a de blood death knight. You don't have infinite self heals. And what can happen, especially if you're new to prop paladin, you're not good at managing your cooldowns. If you use your heal on a word of glory, but then you don't have enough to maintain your shield of the righteous, you can sometimes just get killed. Uh, in some fights, like in Broodkeeper, that does a, a ton of single target damage. Uh, if you choose to heal yourself instead of pop shield of the righteous, you become a lot squishier than you think you will. So uh, in most cases, I would recommend just kind of maintaining your shield of the righteous. Make sure that's always stacked up. You have that armor increase. Stack up your redoubt, which gives you strength. It gives you stamina. Uh, when that comes down, you see you kind of have to be spending that the whole time. But it is an option to not only heal yourself with Word of Glory, but also to heal someone else. It's super clutch to, you know, spot heal the other tank or to heal someone who dropped really low or if a mechanic goes out and the healers are about to miss someone and you throw out that really clutch Word of Glory, boom, big heal. Uh, it can be really, really good. Just note that uh, in, in Raid, your primary, your primary job is to not die. And so if you are choosing Word of Glory, just make sure that you are aware of the consequences of doing so and you're you're doing it for a good reason. Your other uh, po Holy Power Generator is gonna be your Hammer of Wrath. This is your ranged execute. By default, it's only usable when the target is at 20% health or lower, so it's an execute. However, uh, usually when you're running like Sentinel or you're in uh, your, your wing state, you can use whole, you can use your uh, your uh, wrath as much as you want. Uh, you don't have to wait for uh, you know them to be low HP. And that's going to be a big part of managing uh, using your uh, your wings properly. Uh, whether you're running Might or Sentinel, uh, you'll end up trying to build up Holy Power this way, and you'll extend your duration, especially if you're running Sentinel. Uh, it's super important to be able to do that, and that kind of keeps you going, gives you extra Holy Power, uh, and especially when you are pulling a big group of ads um, on a boss fight that has ads. When you see ads drop to 20% and you don't have wings up, make sure you're using the opportunity to get the extra Hammer of Wrath out. Um, make sure you're, you're building up the Holy Power. It is free real estate. You may as well take it. Your other combat ability is Divine Toll. This is the Kyrian uh, ability that we got in, in Shadowlands. And this just shoots out up to five Avenger shields. Uh, depending on how you have it modified, it'll do different things. It's actually really good with Focused Enmity, which uh, makes Avenger Shield not bounce. But you have five of them anyway. You can also make it bounce two additional times if you're down in that side of the tree. Uh, but it's really great because it does still silence and interrupt. So you can use this in like Dathia when you land on the platform. You have to bring all the mobs in. Divine Tull, boom, 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 boom. Everyone's silenced. Suck them all in. Uh, then you can put down your Consecrate, uh, start Shield of Righteous and getting some really good AoE out of that, uh, which is super cool. Uh, just be aware that this one is a one minute cooldown. Uh, it is an awesome one. Uh, it is an awesome one to use. Cooldown wise, defensive wise, you have several options. Uh, unlike in Mythic Plus, some builds will use Eye of Tear, some builds won't. If you are using Eye of Tear, this is a AoE. You activate it and all targets around you will then deal 25% less damage to you for nine seconds. It's super clutch, but if you're running with this Moment of Glory build, it's hard to justify the extra point. I would say this is probably the least common build that I have selected here. There's another one. Uh, which is going to be more kind of using up uh, strength and adversity and getting down to bulwark. Uh, but if you aren't running that build, um, then you might not have uh, eye of tier. Your big boy cooldown is Guardian of Ancient Kings. You will have talents that proc this naturally, but is your your big huge cooldown. It has five minute cooldown, but it reduces all damage taken by fifty percent for eight seconds. This is your uh, oh no button. You press this when you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, and usually you want to save this as your backup uh, because you don't want to be using it, putting it on cooldown, and then you, it won't be coming back up again for a very long time. So use it as a backup once you've exhausted other options is usually what I will tell uh, kind of new prop paladin players to use it as. The other is going to be Wings, Avenging Wrath. You can also pick up Sentinel. Sentinel does have an amazing use. It's, it's basically, you have to run Sentinel in M+, but there are options to not run Sentinel in Raid, depending on the encounter and your playstyle. And you also have Ardent Defender. This is another great cooldown. 1.4 minutes. 
you activate it, and when it's up, you then take 20% less damage. So cycling between these cooldowns, uh, your wings, Guardian Ancient Kings, Eye of Tear if you're running it, uh, Ardent Defender, then you can also use uh, Bastion of Light and Moment of Glory, which is really nice uh, if you're running that build. Bastion of Light means you activate it and your next three uh, casts of your instant Word of Glory are free. Um, so you can just cast them without Holy Power, which is really nice. You get some really cool procs off that. You can self-heal yourself. You can also use it without consuming Holy Power, which means you can still maintain your Shield of the Righteous and be tanky. And then in some builds, you can run Moment of Glory. I like messing with this. Uh, it's actually a really fun build to play with. Moment of Glory, when you activate it, the next 15 seconds, you generate an Absorb Shield for 20% of all damage you deal. Your damage from Avenger Shield is increased and its cooldown is reduced. So while you have it active, when you activate this, your damage that you deal will start building a bubble shield around you, which is super cool. And you can use it to kind of like get a bunch of extra damage off of this uh, and do all that. And you can actually get some really nice absorbs uh, and get some really cool benefits out of your uh, your Avenger shield. There's even a cool build where you run uh, Focus Enmity for big Avenger shield damage, which gives you more bubble. Uh, use a Divine Toll and things like that to really get some awesome value out of it. Then minor cooldown wise, you still have your Blessings. Blessing of Freedom removes slows uh, on a target, which can be really nice. It can be helpful in some situations where you get slowed, like Razageth Puddles, you might be stuck in it, that sort of thing. Uh, you also have a Blessing of Sacrifice. You can throw on your other tank when they're tanking a bunch of damage. Um, when they have like a big tank buster coming in, you can throw it on them, take some of that for yourself um, and absorb it into yourself. Blessing of Protection doesn't have too many uses in the current tier of raiding, but it is super useful. You can use it to uh, remove physical damage to a target, and you can remove bleeds. Uh, it may not be as good in this tier, but there are still some uses, uh, like when add spawn with Kirog, uh, you may want to help absorb some of the physical damage that comes there. You can also help um, you know, individuals that may be targeted by adds uh, in Broodkeeper, but for the most part, you don't, really want, you don't want to be abusing Blessing of Protection on a tank because it'll ruin their aggro and and make things tough for them, but it, those cooldowns are there, just so you're aware. Now let's talk about the, uh, I, there's variants in each build, and we'll talk about the variants themselves, but I would put the two different raid builds into the two categories. There's going to be uh, a category that uses your Moment of Glory, and then there's kind of the more default category that uses Bulwark and Final Stand and relies on just general uh, tankiness. So I'll give you both of those down in the description and we'll talk about them right now. And we'll start with what I would consider to be the superior build of the two. Uh, this one is is focused mo mostly on getting Bulwark. I think if you're playing without Final Stand, it makes your Divine Shield much more advanced to use. So if you're just starting out in, in, in uh, Protection Pal and you're wondering which of these builds is better, go with this one. Uh, I'll have it listed first in the description. This one is far easier to understand and far e easier to utilize. So what this does is it comes down and you'll get Bulwark of the Righteous, which makes Avenger Shield increase the damage of your next shield by 20%, stacking up to five times for each target hit, which uh, has great synergy with Divine Toll. Final Stand is an amazing talent that when you bubble without any modifications, if you bubble, you'll drop aggro, which is really annoying because it, you become immune, but then someone else gets cleaved or gets hit by something. When you have Final Stand, anyone that's within 15 yards of you is taunted while you have the shield up. So as long as you're in melee range, for the most part, you can keep aggro and still have your Divine Shield up, which is super clutch uh, and very necessary, especially if you're a newer player. It also gives you Eye of Tear, which is a 1 minute 25% damage reduction to enemies that are currently targeting you. Um, super useful, it, it bridges the gap between your cooldowns nicely. It means that you can use, like, you can start with Sentinel, then you can do Eye of Tear, then you can do Ardent Offender, then you know you can use some self-healing or some bonuses, then you can then by then Sentinels back up, you can use it again, and if you get in trouble, you can pop Guardian of Ancient Kings. The other build doesn't use Eye of Tear for the most part, which means you have to be better at managing your survivability and better at managing your Shield of the Righteous while still casting heals on yourself and doing damage with the shield. So I think this one overall is superior. It also has Strength and Adversity in it, which is nice. For each target hit by Avenger's Shield, it gives you a 2% parry. You combine this with uh, the two extra bounces on Avenger's Shield and your Divine Toll. It means that you can get some nice parry off of that. So when you Divine Toll or even just Avenger's Shield, you get parry on top of everything. Makes you nice and tanky. Uh, you can even get some bonuses while standing in your Consecration, uh, which generally just makes the game a, a little bit easier to play. And from that standpoint, I think you kind of play with just less on this side of the tree. 
and focus on getting these down here, which is overall just good for you. And that just is the, the, the build itself. The other build is a much more advanced build and it takes advantage of moment of glory. This one is a super nuanced, but very fun cooldown to use. Like I said, you activate it and uh, you'll uh, generate a self-absorbed shield for damage that you deal, which means it is an active cooldown. You have to activate it and then use all that you can within that window to get some value out of it. And it does take uh, advantage of Bastion of Light. Previously, we talked about how uh, when you have Holy Power, you'll be spending it mostly on your defensive. And if you don't have Shield of the Righteous up, you become less tanky, which is rough. So you want to make sure that you are tanky enough to survive the hit. However, if you are better at managing your Holy Power, you can Shield of the Righteous while that window is there. Then you can do some Word of Glories, Word of Glories, right? And then you can kind of stack that back up. Shield of the Righteous, Word of Glory, Word of Glory, Shield of the Righteous, and stack that up. It's just the windows are, for that are pretty tight, and it's a lot harder to play, in my opinion. But I think uh, Bastion of Light is really nice. It's another extra cooldown. Uh, you can pop damage reduction, and you can pop yourself up with healing. Uh, but this is the other build that I would consider uh, viable in raiding right now. Um, there's some other options you can pick up, like you can pick up Improved Holy Shield, which is a chance to block spells, which is really cool. Uh, you can also get Consecrated Ground, which slows enemies. It's great for grouping enemies up, or once they're already grouped up, it can be valuable. Uh, Resolute Defender is also quite valuable. For each three Holy Power spent, you get a cooldown reduction on Ardent Defender and Divine Shield, uh, which is super cool. Uh, so you'll have that extra bonus there. You can also run Hand of the Protector, which gives you more of a spot healing option. I like actually running Hand of the Protector with Bastion of Light, because you can pop Bastion of Light, and then you get some really big spot heals on people in the group that are really low on HP, or, or even on yourself, if you use it on yourself for that effect. And we'll finish with just some basic rotation tips on how to, how to be a, a protection paladin, how to function as a protection paladin. And the first tip is that Blessed Hammer, which is, you're going to pick up here, it replaces your Crusader Strike. This is pretty standard in all builds for Protection Paladin. This can be used out of combat. You can use this anytime. So the big thing is just keep in mind that you have three charges of uh, your Blessed Hammer. You can activate it whenever you want. Uh, the Holy Power out of combat will decay slowly, but you can use this whenever you want. And if, I would recommend doing so. So if you have downtime or you're just moving between mobs or before pull, you can pop up Blessed Hammer, get free Holy Power. One of the best ways to use your Holy Power here is to get to about four Holy Power, and then like right before the pull, and then when the pull starts, you can start with like a Judgment, which instantly hits five Holy Power, activates your Blessing of Dawn, and then you can go right in, hit Shield of the Righteous, and you're immediately tanky. Uh, you can activate one Blessed Hammer or Judgment, Shield of the Righteous again, and boom, it activates Dusk which makes you even tankier, and you're, you're, you're right off, you, you have an excellent start there. So just keep, keep in mind, you can use Blessed Hammer as much as you want. It doesn't have to be in combat, just kind of be throwing hammers around as you're, you're going about your business. The next thing I'll say, and I see a lot of Protection Paladins do this, is you want to prioritize getting your, cool, your cooldowns activated, get all your buffs up, get your defense up before you start doing some of the extra things. One important part of playing Protection Paladin is keeping your Consecrate on the ground. Uh, you get benefits for standing in it if you're talented into it, and it's great AOE threat. The big thing is that it, you know, if you're if you're focusing like on getting consecrate down, but you have three stacks of blessed hammer, two stacks of judgment, you don't have uh, much threat on the mobs, you don't have your shield the righteous up, so you're not that tanky. You don't really have any mitigation going. Uh, I would recommend kind of just getting all the like get at least one blessed hammer out, one judgment out. Uh, you know, get your, your Shield of the Righteous stacking up, make sure you have your Blessings, then throw down your Consecrate, um, because at that point you're still tanky, right? And in general, you want to be spending your Holy Power as much as you possibly can, keeping it on a rotation, spending, 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 spending. A lot in your kit relies on you building and spending Holy Power quickly, um, which obviously Consecrate doesn't benefit that, um, but it is something you want to have active and something going. So get in the habit of building Blessed Hammer before pull, Go in, get your blessings, get your buff, shield the righteous up as much as you possibly can, because when you don't have it up, you're quite squishy. And then you can start doing things like throwing down consecrate, uh, getting free shields out there, making sure everything's uh, good to go. And then if you have opportunities to use your divine toll, obviously those are really fun. Uh, pop that down, you can refresh it. But keep consecrate refreshed, but don't try to prioritize it over being tanky and building holy power and getting all your buffs up. When it comes to cooldown usage, uh, order a priority when it comes to 
using your self mitigation. Obviously, you want to have Shield of the Righteous up at all times if you possibly can. But then when it comes to defensives, if you're using the uh, the final stand build, this bulwark build, which is kind of like the standard for raid paladins, I would say start with Sentinel. The reason Sentinel is so good is because while you have it active, uh, your activity is making it longer and extending it and making it more powerful, which means it's great to start with. It's also a two minute cooldown. So you want to put Sentinel on cooldown, start it with, start the pull with it, go in with Sentinel, spend your holy power and extend the duration and, and the stacks of it, make Sentinel better, and try not to overlap your, your cooldowns unless you need to. Uh, when Sentinel finally does fall, then you want to use Eye of Tear. It's a very short cooldown. You activate it. All targets that are in range will then deal less damage to you. So just know if you switch targets, uh, Eye of Tear won't be on the new target. But when you're standing next to targets, you can activate Eye of Tear. All of these targets will do less damage to me. That is a damage reduction cooldown, which is quite useful. And it's one minute, which means it comes back relatively quickly. Once both Sentinel and Eye of Tear are down, you want to use Ardent Defender. It's a little bit longer cooldown than Eye of Tear. It's not as powerful as Sentinel and definitely not as powerful as Guardian Ancient Kings, but it's a nice filler to kind of build it in. So you're kind of keeping up your, your Holy Power, making sure you have Shield of Righteous up, which makes you tankier. Once that's up, you can Ardent Defender, get your damage reduction down, get your rotation through again as well, uh, and keep that tankiness up. And you want to be keeping Shield of Righteous active, resetting it, uh, keeping that going. And you basically want to rotate through those. You can bridge with Bastion of Light if you need to. Like, you know, you let your health drop a little bit in between your, uh, your usage of Shield of the Righteous. Throw Word of Glory on yourself uh, a couple times to stack yourself back up and do that again. And then uh, once you're through all of those, usually Sentinel will be back off cooldown and you can use it again. And then I recommend using Guardian Ancient Kings as your backup. You don't really get to use this more than once or twice in a fight, even in a long fight. You don't get big resets for this. This is your, oh no, I'm in a lot of trouble or... You know, like Thunderous Blast, Phase 3, Razageth. Like, I need to take very little damage here. This is a big hit. Uh, then you can pop Guardian Ancient Kings, and that gives you that extra little bonus of uh, protection, which is really nice. Uh, but I would use it as a backup, not something to start with. And that's it. That's Protection Paladin in Raid. The builds are down below in the description. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can find me live on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Have fun tanking out there. Prop Paladin is a lot of fun, and there's a lot of really cool tools that you can use. Uh, in any style of content. So congrats on choosing a good tank, and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon-exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>